you're gonna want to try this. In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'm gonna show you my favorite painting technique. A secret method to paint flashy illustrations like this one in very little time and in just four basic steps without even using a base drawing. Uh-oh, let's get this class started. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. If you're a subscriber, you've seen a few different coloring tutorials on the channel over the years, you know, showing different techniques, but there's still a lot that I've never shown, including the process I'll show you guys today, which happens to be my favorite, and you'll see why soon. Different situations, you know, call for different methods, and today's method will work great for more painterly results when no base drawing is involved. It'll also work in every painting software ever. Well, and we're gonna go right into it. So let me explain the first step out of only four, and you'll see it's a super simple process. Not necessarily easy though, but it's the one that I find the most rewarding in the sense that you'll get a really good preview of the final result almost right away in the process. Most of my other coloring methods usually rely on more rigid steps, you know, where everything only really comes together at the end, not this time. If you're impatient for results when painting, like I am, this is going to be worth trying. The first step will be to block out the general shapes of what you want to paint, like I've been doing in the background here. You can, of course, use a rough sketch if you prefer. It won't break, you know, the method, but it's nice that you don't have to. Now, the trick at this stage will be to paint everything as if it was fully lit, you know, with no shadows, maximum brightness. In a way, it's kind of like watercolor painting, you know, starting from the lighter shades, and then we'll darken things and increase contrasts as we go. And well, we're almost at my favorite step already. I started with super rough silhouettes of my characters just to lay things out and kind of figure out what I was going to do with the composition. And now I'm just wrapping up the outfits and the background. The idea of the painting here was just that I was imagining they're all art teachers leaving work for the day to go hit a pub or something. Ugh. And in case you're wondering, so far my layer stack is real simple, just a normal layer for each of the characters and one for the background. That's it. I'm just putting on the final brush strokes for the background, but as you can see, it's still very rough. But that's a great spot to move on to the second step. With my entire scene blocked in with flat colors and rough shapes, now it's time to dramatize this up. We're about to make this painting more dramatic. On the new layer, set the blend mode to multiply, and I'm gonna pick a light blue slash purple color and slap that onto about half of my painting to make it seem as if the characters were walking underneath like a partially covered area or something like that. I wanted the main focus to be on the character in the front also, so isolating her within the zone of light while the two other characters occupy the shaded part works out great. It makes her pop, you know, kind of highlights her. What I have so far also suggests a light direction, so I'll want to make sure I add some shadows on the character's side that are opposite to the light source. And I mean, it's rough, of course, but I think the shadows just feel so rewarding to me for some reason. It makes the painting look a lot more striking and I'm literally just, you know, painting with one color here. The fact that the shadows use a separate layer also makes it super easy to adjust in case I mess it up or if I want to try something different, like a different lighting setup. And this is basically it for this step. I'm not going to worry about the shadows looking perfect since we'll clean it up later when the characters underneath are finalized. But now I know exactly where I'm going with this painting. If you squint, the difference between this and the final result will probably look about the same. So now quickly, before I move on to the next step, I'm just gonna hide the shadows, be gone, and clean up my characters a bit more so that we don't notice the brush strokes too much. We're gonna need some clean shapes before moving on. Well, not clean, but you know, clean-ish. The background is good enough though, so I'll just go over each character and give them just a little bit more love, you know, but not too much. And obviously this is all a little harder than it looks. You need to have some anatomy knowledge, some design skills, some color theory knowledge, knowledge of composition, perspective, and you'll find all kinds of tutorials about this stuff for free on the channel. But if you're looking for a 
complete art education with the structure that, you know, individual videos really can provide. Check out my art school program with the link in the video description. There's only a few days left before the price goes up, so take advantage of the huge holiday sale right now and get your art education on track. We also have an awesome private Discord community if you're looking for a place to hang out with a ton of other artists all learning the same stuff. I'm also wrapping up a completely rebuilt perspective class for the first term. So that's going to drop soon and existing students always get new updates for free. I don't want you to miss out on this. So check it out with the link in the description or go to cgart.school. All right, now time to give some more depth to these flat characters with some subtle shading. This is not going to be the 3D shading I usually do, you know, like the one I showed a few weeks ago. Instead, we'll go very minimalistic with it, only really focusing on the areas the light can't reach too well, like the deeper clothing folds for the most part. I really don't have a lot of detail so far, so this step is going to contribute some more, making the flat characters pop a little bit more. And in case you're wondering, I'm still working on a normal blend mode layer for this. I'll pop a new layer on top of each of my characters so that if I make a mistake or want to make some edits, I can just erase the shading without impacting what's underneath. And then worth mentioning, maybe the shading part here doesn't really take into consideration the light direction. So you could technically redo the shadows if you end up you know, changing your mind about it, or you could do the step first and then work on the shadows after. So basically step two and three are interchangeable. Now that I'm done with all three characters though, here's what those layers used to look like and what they look like now with the shading added on top. Mmm, nice bro. Subtle, but way better. Finally then, the last step is going to be the icing on the cake. I'm going to create a new layer on top of my shadow layer and I'll leave mine to normal blend mode, but often I'll use hard light blend mode too. It just depends on how I feel that day, you know? Like if I use a lot of metals and a lot of reflective surfaces like that, oftentimes hard light works better. But anyways, the kinds of reflections we'll be focusing on here are things like the highlights in the hair, the reflection in the eyes, you know, gloss on different surfaces, glare too, that kind of stuff. This is a relatively quick step, so let's hold off on the full reveal and build the whole painting back up again from the beginning, adding each step I covered. So we started by blocking out the shapes, including uh, the background, then adding the shadow layer, Ooh. then the shading for fur, free red, and dark. And then finally, to wrap this all up, the reflections. <laughs> there we go. Painting done. That was fun. And the cool thing with this method is you can always change the lighting at the end if you have a sudden change of heart. Let's say I wanted to have her in the shadow instead while the other two are not. I could do that too. I don't, but you get the idea. And this is going to wrap it up for this week's class. This doesn't really hold up all that well if we zoom in a lot. You know, I spent about like two hours on this, so it's understandably still very rough. But for a social media post, it's perfect. Let me know how you like it. And if you end up trying this out, also freebies. You can grab my starter brush set that includes a lot of the brushes that I use for this painting. The link will be in the video description and the brushes are free. Go get it, bro. And don't miss out on the sale of my art program.